Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be looking at Fedora Silver Blue 38 today and talking about it. So let's dive in and see what it's, that's all about. I've talked about Fedora Silver Blue in the past, but this is the first time I've talked about 38. Just like all of its predecessors, Fedora Silver Blue 38 is based on Fedora Workstation 38 as well. The main difference though is that Fedora Silver Blue's root file system is immutable. Been a lot of talk, I've seen a lot of videos that have been done uh, lately about immutable file systems. So you probably have a pretty good idea about what that means. Basically, it means your root file system is read-only. But what specific parts of the root file system are read-only? Well, it's the sysroot that they call sysroot, which would be the old slash. It's your slash USR directory. Everything below those are uh, is read-only that you can write into. So, meaning that you can't change libraries, uh, packages, and, oh, and rewrite things that into the root file system or mount file systems there either. Var, however, is where all of Silverblue's runtime state is stored. In other words, your old home directories have been moved under var. Your uh, OPT or optional directory has been moved under var. Uh, the SRV or mount areas, those are under var and slash temp is under var as well. Uh, and for that reason, Silverblue does not support dual booting. Uh, or th Now, this is their declaration or manual partitioning. But if you, f if you go to their website, they, uh, the Fedora Silverblue will show you that there is some limited uh, manual partitioning that you can do if you want to. How is it really built up? There's, there's really a number. There's three pieces that comprise this. I mean, OS Tree is the kind of the overall umbrella, but RPM OS Tree is the daemon that allows you to manage traditional RPM packages. And there's two parts to that. There's the lib OS Tree and the lib DNF. And both of those have to do with controlling the image, and now you have an image of the system. So each one of those images is tracked separately depending upon what updates are done to it. Sort of like a version control system, if you want to look at it that way, uh, except it's for the file system and not for managing the apps themselves. OS Tree is really the core technology that's used to compo uh, compose and to deploy and update Silverblue. That's, that's what it does. Uh, and I, I remember that the last time I did a video on, on Silverblue, I had a note from one of the devs that says, hey, we're working on trying to figure out if we can get rid of OS Tree or not. I don't know what the state of that is. Obviously, it didn't make it into 38. But, you know, plans and execution times, those occur at their own pace. And, and as we all know, in the open, uh, open source world, that's controlled by what has to get done, how many people can work on it, and how much budget I have to work with. So the RPM OS tree builds on top of OS tree, and it adds the capability to install RPM packages at the top of the OS tree image. But what does OS tree really do? So that's part of the transactional, and it's the background uh, image-based upgrade. So it does all of those things. It, it manages all the updates as a transaction, so it, once you start an update process, it starts a new transaction. It, it completes it when the update is completed. So then it cuts off. And you can continue to add things to that, that same version, until you reboot. And that closes it out and makes it permanent. So any new changes that you make would be a new version of the uh, image. So OS tree also allows me to roll back without uh, impacting my user data. And so I, if I find that I installed something that makes my application space unstable or doesn't complete the install correctly, I can just roll it back to what I had been using prior. Uh, OS tree is the underlying update mechanism for Fedora Core OS, uh, of course, Fedora Kenalite and Silverblue. Kenalite is similar to Silverblue. It's, it has the same technology base, except 
the desktop environment is based on KDE and not GNOME. The way that you approach this, uh, the way you have to think about this is that you have to stop thinking about employ deploying packages through the DNF utility uh, or as an RPM. If it's a GUI application, the preferred way to install it is through as a flat pack. And the reason for that is because that is a containerized version of your application. And that keeps me from tainting my core environment, which is the, that's the whole goal behind Silverblue. Uh, the second thing is, is that we normally use Toolbox to deploy uh, client-side applications. Yes, you can deploy GUI applications there as well, but that's not the recommendation to follow. That's not what the Fedora Silverblue team prefers. They would prefer that you did that under flat packs and reserve the toolbox for your CLI applications. RPM OS tree package layering is then used for the host up updates. I gotta have a, some way of controlling how do I get new versions of the kernel? How do I get new, new versions of the core applications that are shipped with Silverblue? What do I need to run this? It's the same as Fedora Workstation. They say two gig of memory, 20 gig of disk, 10, uh, 24 by 768 display. I would recommend a four core CPU, probably four to eight gig of memory, because again, remember, you've got more stuff that's gonna be running here. Four gig of memory, I would recommend probably closer to eight. 20 gig, eh, I don't think so. You know, 32 might be a stretch. The thing you have to remember is, is if you're installing Toolbox, each one of those images of, of, of Fedora's workstation is 500 megabytes. So the, you can deploy multiples of those, uh, but you know, just remember that each one of those is gonna take 500 megabytes at minimum, plus whatever packages you're gonna add on top of that. The kernel is the same as Fedora Workstation at 6.2. I'm not gonna go through the changes again here. If you wanna know more about that, go look at the Fedora uh, Workstation 38 review that I did last week. As far as the changes to Silverblue 38, Let's talk a little bit first about the mount points that you can manually repartition. So you can you can do slash boot uh, sl and slash var. You can change var home. You can change var mount. And of course, you can also move sysroot as a complete root file system. You can move that as well. Just be careful you don't move USR or something like that. All of the same enhancements are that are coming from Fedora 30, Workstation 38 are in Silverblue. So there's, I'm not gonna talk about the packages again here. I've already talked about those. Mixed application library version mismatches, it, it avoids those. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. I can do containerized development. I can set up separate containerized packet, uh, areas for each project I'm working on. I have a container GUI applications under flat packs for things. There's some advantages to that. There's also some disadvantages to that, to doing that. Uh, yeah, but you know, it, it is what it is. And I, I actually have learned to prefer the flat pack environment. It's just about keeping my base OS nice and lean and nice and clean. And I really like that. That's our, those are my final thoughts about the thing. Anyway, hope to see you all in the next video. Please, uh, please do the uh, share and hope to see you again soon and bye for now. Mm -hmm.